All right, for this uh, segment here, I am making a backup uh, 30 amp fuse for my house wiring system using um, 10 gauge wire here. This is the same wire that I used to wire to the house battery from the um, starter battery. I know people say you should use a, a larger wire, which on a future build I'll probably go larger, but um, for now this is what I have and it seems to be working fine, so I'll stick with it. Um, I basically cut some small length 10 uh, gauge wire here, about, um, probably about 6 inches, maybe 7, 5 to 7 inches. And then on one end, I, I clamped down to uh, a little female connector here. So I did that on each of these. And on the other end, I put in one of these O connectors, because this will go to the battery terminal. And this is going to go to the fuse. This will go to the fuse. And this other line will twist wire into the house wiring system, which I'll show you here in a minute. And I have my cheap little um, flea market um, fuse, which I'm probably going to replace with the store-bought one. I don't know if these work or not. Last time, my whole unit melted. So I'm just going to put this in there temporarily because it's what I have. And then I'm probably going to buy some store-bought um, fuses. I'm not going to go with these cheap um, flea market ones. Although these connectors are flea market. They were only like, um, like this bag was like a dollar. I had like two, four, six, eight, ten of them for a dollar. I didn't get any of these old ones. I bought these from the store. It's like three dollars for that pack or something. Two dollars and something. So if I'd gotten it from the flea market, it would be like only a only dollar for these things. And then the fuses were really cheap also. It's like a dollar for like twelve of them. I may try it. I don't know. Um, but anyhow, I have a current wire right there, a current fuse that I bought from the store from Walmart for like $3. And it had melted before because the wiring that they used was 12 gauge. See, I have the 10 gauge here. They had 12 gauge. So the unit was 10 gauge, but at the fuse, it was 12 gauge. And uh, I guess that was not good enough to handle the, the current flow for cooking and it melted. So we're going to try 10 gauge this time, and I'm making my own fuse. So what we're going to do now is we're essentially going to put these this into this end here. And this into the other end here. And you can see we would have a connection here. And then the wire, the energy will go through, and if it gets too much, it should blow the fuse. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to put tape here on the end of the um this spot so they don't accidentally touch and connect and complete a circuit without you know um, bypassing the fuse so that's what we'll do next okay here you can see I have put some um, electrical tape here to cover the metal because we don't want the metal part making contact and also I notice this is like a little bit loose where the fuse goes in so what I'm gonna do is clamp down on it just a little bit because I want the fuse to be kind of tight when it goes in and out to make sure it makes good contact. Basically, I'm going to take one of these um, pliers here and just squeeze down just a little bit um, so that it's going to be like a tight fit for the fuse to go in and out. And by having it like this, the metal part shouldn't make contact except through the fuse itself. I'm going to do the same with the other one now. Here you can see I'm doing a test fitting. I have... um. I put my pliers and I squeeze down. I'll show you here. I squeeze down on that right here. You know, I clamp down like that and push down so that it's in so that it'll be tight. I also went a little bit from the side there. But it, it's like a. I want this fuse to, when it sits in there, to make really good contact. It needs to be kind of tight. All right, as you can see, I've done the same on the other side. I clamped down as well. And so the unit is pretty much done. It can be used just like this. I'm going to show you. But what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to tape these together now. Like this. You know, wrap the whole unit up and maybe even use the glue. The um, E6000 or whatever glue to hold everything together. Or I might just tape it and not bother with the gluey goo. But I might put the goo in there just to hold things together and keep it. I want the spacing like this so I can easily put the fuse in and out. But we're going to wrap tape around all of this right now and then just make it so it looks like a nice unit, almost like the, the store-bought one. And um, this end will go to the um, 
the house wire right here and this end goes to the battery terminal now we're not going to use this right now we're just going to um, save it for emergency so here you have our finished product which looks very similar to the commercial one there but basically we have the the fuse here which can come out which i'll take out here just to show you but this in here with the loose wire would go to that right there for the the um house wiring that black one right there and i just use that that screw on nut to hold the two together and then this other end would go right here where um we have the power i mean the connector for the battery let me open this up just to show you what it looks like here you can see i've taken the fuse out and what it looks like here my concern is that it doesn't get so hot that it melts that right there. I think I may make another one. Um, or maybe take this one apart and wrap more tape. Give it a little bit more insulation between the two. See how the two pieces of metal here? They could end up making contact and completing a circuit. I mean, we have it wrapped right now, but I think I'm going to unwrap this tape and then wrap that up some more on the, the ends there before I put it back together just to give it a little bit more insulation between the two pieces of metal because it can get so hot that this can melt all right as you can see i've rewrapped it i took it apart and i've rewrapped these um terminal endings here so it's very thick look how thick the uh tape electrical tape is on there i'm trying to make sure that this part and this part does not touch um even when it gets hot that this doesn't melt through hopefully and then we're going to go ahead and um Reassemble the unit now. Okay, so here is our completed unit. I've rewrapped it all and got the that's how the fuse will sit in it. And you know what? I decided I'm gonna go ahead and test it now. I'm gonna rewire it in. I'm gonna un rewire unwire or remove the existing one, which works fine. It's from the store. But that this yellow line is only 12 gauge and this is 10 gauge, so this should be better. And I'm going to take that store-bought fuse and put it in here instead of this cheap um, flea market one. Because I don't know if I trust that. I think I'd rather go with a store-bought fuse. So we're going to go ahead and undo that and put this unit in to um, test it out. As you can see, we've um, wired it in. We um, use that nut over there, the yellow one there, to put that together. Here where we can see it and access it if need be. And um, we've um, put the round piece over here, so the unit's in. Now all I need to do is insert the, um, the fuse here. This is the store-bought 30 amp fuse. I'll put it right in there. And then we just need to test the unit out. And it, with any luck, everything should be fine. It should be better than before because now the whole system's running through um, 10 AWG wire, number 10, instead of going 10 and then down to 12. Here you can see I've inserted the um, the 30 amp fuse, and we can actually look at it. See the U-shaped thingy in there? When it blows, that U thing will, will melt, and it won't be connected anymore, and that's how we know the fuse is blown. So we're going to put it just like this, and then um, test the unit out and make sure everything works. To test everything out, I started up the vehicle, and now I'm just going to try to... Um, Flip the switch on and see if anything blows. Okay, so the switch is up, um, so the unit should be on. And now to make sure that everything's working, I'm going to go see if my inverter's on. And uh, take a look at that. Should have probably went through the front instead of walking around here. But Okay, inverter's off because we didn't turn it on. Let's try to turn it on and see if uh, the system... Well, I can see power's coming through because light's coming on there. Inverter comes on. System's reading at 14, 14 volts, 14.1 volts. That's pretty good. And my broken um, battery unit here is charging, but it doesn't. It charges, but it doesn't hold the charge. So I know the battery inside is dead, and I took it apart the other day to get the part number. But I didn't write it down, so I'm only going to have to open it up again. But um, I'm going to try to order the battery and get a replacement battery to fix that. 
but right now um, the system is generating 14.1, 14.0 volts. It's actually reading more than before. Right? Before it used to say like 13.8. So the wiring has made a difference. Um, I think more electricity is flowing through now. So we're hopefully this will hold and won't melt. That we can look and see and it seems like everything is working so I will keep the system as is with the um, rigged um, fuse holder here and we'll keep the uh, store-bought one as a backup emergency and I may make another unit just in case 